cosmological mirror symmetry for not so simple singularities. So, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so first, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for this uh, very nice conference. Um, so this is a um, joint work uh, with Kazushi Ueda. Um, and uh, um, the content of everything that I'm going to say is already on archive. On uh, So that's I, we have two papers on archive. And I'm just going to summarize the content from those papers. Okay, so um, okay, so uh, let me just first start with uh, uh, saying that there's a there's this, uh, the theorem of Futaki and Ueda uh, from two thousand nine. So after I wrote this, I, I actually uh, had a laugh at myself. I called it history, but it's ten years. It's not it should be called history. But so. Um, so this is a result about uh, uh, homological mirror symmetry for singularities. Uh, so uh, let me just try to say what's what's in here. Um, uh, so on the left, uh, we have um, the um, partial wrap category of uh, C2 with a stop given by this hypersurface. So this, this is a curve in C2. Uh, so it's used as a stop. So more traditionally, these, these, these categories are called Foucault-Zeidel categories, but now we, we, we are calling them partial draft categories because partial draft categories kind of uh, generalized the notion of Foucault-Zeidel. Um, and on the right, we have a matrix factorization category of C2, uh, on C2 of this function xq plus y squared, but it's a graded matrix factorization, so there's a group gamma, uh, which in this case is just a, a, just a multiplicative group. Um, and uh, we have to look at great matrix factorizations. Um, and uh, what I'm describing here uh, is, a, um, uh, is an equivalence of both sides. And in fact, uh, this, this equivalence is proven by constructing generators on each side and the endomorphism algebra of these generators is just this uh, A2 cleaver. So, um, this is a very special case of, of course, a, a much more general result that they proved, but I, I would like to uh, focus on this uh, particular one right now. Um, so if, if it was just this one, uh, it's a very simple computation of both sides. So it's, this is exercise level uh, computation, but, uh, uh, but actually the, the result is about uh, um, arbitrary um, uh, distant sums of uh, Type A and Type D polynomials, so it's it's a, it, it's in any dimension. Um, and I should also say that these the, the B model categories were studied by Takahashi and Ueda uh, a few years before. Okay, so so this is one result, um, and the, this this is another result uh, that I would like to bring up, um, and this is a, this is now. Uh, so previously, we were looking at a partially wrapped category of C2 with a stop uh, given by a hypersurface. Um, but now uh, uh, we are doing something else. We are taking the fibers uh, of, uh, so we are, we are looking at the hypersurface itself, and then we are looking at the Foucault category of this hypersurface. So, so just to uh, uh, connect it, so I, I think I'll be able to connect it. Uh, Toby is talking in several points, but this is, uh, this is the Milner fiber of the singularity. Right. And uh, uh, so, so on the left, we are taking the Fukaya category of this. And when I say Fukaya category, I, I don't mean the wrapped Fukaya category, but uh, compact Fukaya category here. So I, I usually distinguish between them by either putting an F or a W. So, so here, uh, all our objects are uh, closed curves or inverse curves. Um, and on the right, we have a B-model uh, category, which is uh, perfect complexes on this uh, um, rational nodal curve. And so it's precise, explicitly given by this equation. And the uh, uh, perfect complexes is maybe a scary name for saying uh, complexes of vector bundles. So, 
Uh, and again, uh, this, so this theorem uh, we proved in 2010. Um, and again, uh, it's proven in the following way. We, we just choose generators on the on both sides. So on the on the on the left, we choose A and B curves. The obvious A and B curves. These turn out to be uh, generators of the, this category. And on the right, we we have the their mirrors turn out to be the structure sheaf and the the point sheaf. Um, but what I want to uh, emphasize is, is the relation between these two terms. Uh, so I, I'll describe this P uh, in the next slide. Um, so, so remember the first result that I, I, I told you was about uh, this A2 cleaver. Uh, so I called it A and it was a, a, a partial wrap category, right? And the, the, the second result is about this category B, which is, um, uh, which is um, uh, the fiber of this uh, uh, partial wrap category. It's 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 the Milner fiber itself. And uh, but then, uh, so even though these results were proven somewhat independently, uh, there is a there is an interesting relationship between them. So that's that's what I want to explain. Um, in fact, uh, as soon as I write these algebras here, uh, I believe it is uh, somewhat clear what the relationship is. So, so if you if you don't read, uh, so if you if you look at uh, just the quivers themselves, uh, it's it's the double link of A, right? So we just add an arrow on the other side uh, of uh, degree one in this case because we are working with uh, uh, you know complex dimension one symplectic manifolds, um, and in fact this this algebra here, if you if you don't consider the A infinity structure, it's what's called the trivial extension algebra. I don't know, sometimes it's called cyclic completion. Um, so that's what, what B is. But the interesting, uh, the interesting fact is that this, uh, this category is not formal. So this, uh, this, it's not, uh, this B uh, has some higher products and uh, it's not quasi-isomorphic to its cohomology. So, so it's not uh, immediately from A, we, we, we can construct P, we can construct its cohomology, but then we have to work harder to determine the A infinity structure. So uh, I wrote here explicitly this, uh, so I, I worked with this particular example quite a lot, so I, I know of many models for it. And this is a particular A infinity structure that gives you the right answer. So since people like explicit computations, so this is, I wrote it here. Um, but, you know, you should always think that whenever somebody gives you an infinity structure, they, there's, a, there's an infinite uh, uh, gauge group acting on it, right? So, so it's kind of, uh, maybe two people gave you an infinity structure and you want to match them. It's, it's a hard work to match them because, so somehow I made a choice here among infinitely many possible choices, right? So, so you shouldn't take this uh, particular formula that seriously. Yeah. Okay, so so that's uh, so we are, we are going to explain this infinity structure much more uh, 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 conceptually in a minute. Uh, but for now, I just want to note that uh, it is an infinity structure on the cyclic completion of this A. Uh, there is also a, a dual story, so an infinity causal dual story, which is about a. Uh, uh, wrapped categories and the coherent sheets. So, so again, going one slide back. So this theorem was about uh, Foucault categories of the compact Lagrangians and uh, perfect complexes on the right. But since, the, uh, so in each side, there's this alternative categories that we can consider, right? So on the left, we can consider wrapped Foucault categories, so it allows non-compact objects. And on the right, since this is a singular variety, we can consider coherent sheets. And, uh, and these are uh, uh, the, the, these are equivalent. Uh, uh, again, this is a version of mirror symmetry. But in fact, uh, you don't have to work too much to prove this uh, this this uh, uh, this particular one if you know the previous one because it can be obtained by an infinity causal duality in this case. And that will come up again. Um, any questions so far? No. 
So let me summarize what happened. So I want to connect all these uh, equivalences in one set of diagrams. So in a diagram of quasi-equivalences. So, so the first one was this equivalence, and it was a matrix factorization category on the right. And on the left, it was a partial wrap category. So this was on C2 on, the, uh, on its side. Um, and this is the result of Fut Futaki Ueda. Now, there are, so the, the point is that these, uh, the second one is, is this result about punctured torus. And the point is that these results are not independent. I and mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's a nice way to connect them. Uh, namely, um, whenever you have a, a Lagrangian, for example, here in C2 that avoids the stop, you can intersect that Lagrangian with, 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 with a fiber of this, uh, 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 this equation x cubed plus y squared. So that gives you a functor here. And uh, correspondingly, on here, there is a functor, which is, uh, so, so on here, uh, previously I said uh, we should take perfect complexes on this x cubed plus y squared plus x, y, z. That's how we first proved it. But if you interpret, reinterpret this uh, uh, in terms of matrix factorizations, so there's a, uh, uh, there's a theorem of Orloff that relates uh, these uh, matrix factorizations to the right category of coherent sheaves or perfect complexes on the hypersurface. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you use that one, uh, so you can replace these categories by matrix factorizations, and then there's obvious functors on, on the B side as well. So, so this is this, this uh, diagram of quasi equivalences, uh, which packs all of these uh, theorems nicely uh, in, in one place. And uh, this is what I want to, so once you realize that, you can generalize uh, the statements uh, to be proven. So, so that's, uh, that's why we're gonna go. Okay. So, and this is the story uh, about uh, invertible polynomials. So this was a uh, physicist, Bergman Hübsch, uh, who came up with, with this uh, particular construction of uh, uh, mirror symmetry. And uh, uh, the, it's really funny because I, I would call this a, like an elementary school version of mirror symmetry. Because what you do is you, you construct, a, you have a polynomial W, which is a, given by, a, uh, by a, a square matrix. So you have uh, uh, the number of terms and the number of monomials is the same in this, uh, in this one. So it's maybe it's hard to parse, but like if you look at this example, there are three uh, variables and three monomials, right? So previously we had x squared plus y cubed, there are two variables and two monomials. And then their proposal was if you want to uh, do, uh, construct a mirror, you should take the transpose of this matrix, and then you, have, you get this uh, other polynomial. And, and basically, you should just uh, associate the correct categories to these, these two pairs, and then they should be equivalent. So on, the, on the, uh, one side, you should take a Fukaya category, and on the other side, you should take a matrix factorization category. So of course, uh, they were not working on homological mirror symmetry, so this, is, this uh, relation came a bit afterwards. Um, so, and uh, I, I have to also explain when um, it's also important to keep track of this, this group. So as in the, in, in the simple example that we started with, um, there, there's, a, there's also a, a symmetry group that uh, comes into play. So we don't uh, uh, just take matrix actualizations, but we take graded matrix actualizations. And this grading group is, is defined as follows, uh, starting from the matrix. Um, and, and, and again, maybe if you have never seen this, it's a, it looks a bit uh, uh, mysterious, but, but it is not. It is the most, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a kind of a diagonal symmetries of these polynomials. So it's, uh, these polynomials are all quasi-homogeneous. And this is a bit uh, more than a C star action. It's, uh, it, it can be like extension of a C star by some finite group. But the, all of these are diagonal uh, uh, 
uh, symmetries of this uh, polynomial. Now, what we do is we take this uh, uh, transpose polynomial, but then we crucially add this, this product monomial. So, so this is maybe one of the contents of this talk, so I want to explain this. So, so here, um, I chose this n such that there's n plus one variables because I'm interested in the hypersurface defined by this, so the dimension of this hypersurface is n. Um, so and then this, uh, this, this is a square matrix of n plus one by n plus one uh, square matrix. And the bergman hoops uh, uh, proposal is about uh, taking this transpose. What we do here is we first of all increase the, the, the number of variables by one. So I add an x zero. W does not get uh, modified, but I add this uh, product monomial that includes this x zero. Okay, so this is an important modification to make uh, correct statements. So, so you, have to, you have to include this x here. Um, and then, um, so we figured out this, uh, the correct generalization of the initial uh, story that I, I described. So let's go over this diagram once again. Um, so, so now um, the top one is, uh, um, Essentially, uh, um, you know, for the statement of what Futaki Ueda proved, but it's just I replaced the, uh, so they, they, they didn't prove it for any polynomial, any invertible polynomial, but those that are kind of this brisk on farm, and then uh, maybe you can add some type D type uh, polynomials to them. So but the, the conjecture is that uh, for any W, you can do this. And, and in this part, there is no modification. So the W and W check are just transpose of each other. So this is the Fukai's idle category of W check, or you can call it partial wrap category with this hypersurface as a stop. And uh, this is the matrix of great matrix optimizations. Okay. So the second line is uh, what I would say is the, is the, um, the uh, maybe the, the, this, this, the discovery in this uh, set of conjectures we wrote. So we take the Milner fiber of this singularity. Okay, so, and then we look at uh, its Fukaya category. And it's really a Milner fiber. So it's like uh, what Milner writes in, in his book on uh, singularities of complex hyperservices. So it's not, it's not a, uh, uh, it's not in C star to do something, or it's really in C to do n, n, n plus one, uh, and it's the Milner fiber. Okay. Um, and on the right, we, we, we do this modification of going one dimension higher, and then we, we add this product monomial. Okay. Um, so this is the conjecture. This should be equivalent. Um, what is this zero? We, we need uh, we need this uh, matrix factorizations to be supported at, at the origin, if you want the compact Fukai category. But maybe uh, you just want to go all the way directly to the wrapped category, then you don't have that condition. So that this the, the compact category sits inside the wrapped category as a full and faithful embedding, and uh, so so the statement is. Uh, this wrapped category of this Miller fiber should be equal to this matrix factorizations. Okay. And uh, so, so somehow uh, these, uh, the invertible polynomials mirror symmetry for them in many different uh, uh, aspects uh, has been studied uh, uh, in, you know, in, in, by a lot of people. Uh, and uh, so, so somehow this is a, a Way I could, you know, Leda and I could uh, uh, put uh, all, all things now together, and this is kind of uh, what we think is should be true. So, um, and and I'll explain uh, the, kind of the rest of the talk. I'll explain uh, our method to prove this uh, for the case that we can prove, and uh, I should also mark, remark that. Uh, um, so n equals to one case, uh, the case of curves. So, is uh, actually the complete thing is known. Uh, 
So this is uh, by work of uh, Jack Smith, who's not, uh, who's only related to Ivan Smith by being a PhD student of him, and uh, and Matt Haberman. So, so this they, they their first paper proved the, the first line, and uh, Haberman's uh, follow-up proved the second line. So, um, all right. So, but uh, so so because of that. Uh, I will no longer talk about n equals to one case. I will go higher dimensions. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I included this slide so because I, I didn't see matrix factorizations discussed in the previous talks, but maybe it, it, it's it's known. So when I say matrix factorizations, you shouldn't be scared. So it is, it's really, um, so you have this polynomial algebra, right? And we have uh, two matrices with, uh, with uh, entries in this polynomial algebra. And uh, the property is that when you multiply them, you should get the potential uh, as times the diagonal matrix, right? And, uh, and a little bit more carefully, you should be, caref uh, you should be careful that uh, these uh, entries are, uh, you know, homogeneous with respect to the group action. So, so the right uh, hand side, is not that scary, I would say. What about the left hand side? So, so there, um, I will explain what, what, what the methods that uh, we use to compute. So, they're a bit harder, uh, uh, but uh, but but symplectic geometry has been developing quite uh, fast now, and we have many many uh, tricks to apply. So. So we can actually compute these things in many cases. So this is what I want to explain. Um, so again, uh, F is the compact Fukai category of this uh, Milner fiber, right? And W is the wrapped Fukai category of this Milner fiber. So how is it going? Is it, uh, there's no questions? Is it clear to everyone or is it <laughs> any? Am I going too fast, too slow? <laughs> no, no, no comments? Okay, well, what can I do? Okay, I think it's okay. Okay, so let's continue. So here's a, so I want to answer what, what we do for computing these guys. Okay, so, so the first one, is uh, the, the difficulty is this A infinity structure, right? So even in the torus case, in the punctured torus case I started with, um, you know, you started with this A and then you, you took a trivial extension algebra of A, but then there's a higher products. So how do you compute these higher products? So, so the, the fiber uh, almost always says this uh, higher products uh, and, and so, that, that's a difficult thing to compute. Um, so, so, in the case, so in here we used the method that was uh, that, that we, we introduced in this uh, in the puncture torus case actually. So that that, that method uh, turns out to generalize to higher dimensions. So, and uh, that I'll, I'll get to this, but basically what we do is. Uh, from Futaki Ueda's uh, result about these partially wrapped categories. So, so go, let's go back to the slide, right? So this first equivalence, we get some objects in, in the second side, but we, we need to determine the infinity structure to, to match. So we apply, we have generators in each side, we apply this uh, functors to get to here, but in, then we have to check that the endomorphism algebras there are, are still, uh, because you know, isomorphic. So we can check that at the cohomological level very easily. The cohomological level, it's uh, it's easy to show that these are trivial extension algebras. But then we have to determine the infinity structure. And as I said, the uh, infinity structure, there's an infinite group acting on it. So the idea there was, uh, even in the puncture torus case, was to construct a moduli of A infinity structures. So rather than trying to show two things that are isomorphic, you first make a place where they live. 
And then uh, that, that place, uh, uh, hopefully, is a five-dimensional place. And then there, you locate them. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a, this, this idea, which I will explain, reduces uh, uh, the difficulty into finite dimensions, finite dimensional difficulty. Um, so here are some references. So this, this idea was introduced to in, in our paper about puncture torus, but then it was uh, generalized substantially by Polishchik uh, in the case of curves. And, um, and but uh, it's, it's really this uh, infinity deformation theory that goes back to Kansevich and Seidel. So this, um, uh, um, one of the discoveries in, in this work uh, with Ueda is that we, we can we can implement this uh, this idea in higher dimensions. So this the second uh, the answer to the second question is uh, is causal duality. So once we understand the first one, um, we we put ourselves in this. So so there are some assumptions here, but uh, uh, they they work uh, in in many general. Uh, Situations where uh, we, we use causal we, we, we use causal duality to say that if you know the equivalence for f, you can deduce the equivalence for w. So, so of course, causal duality is uh, uh, you know everyone is familiar uh, in representation theory. So this was uh, uh, this particular uh, way of relating f and w was uh, uh, introduced uh, in my work with Etki and then generalized. Uh, with the deco, but uh, somehow on on large algebra level, uh, this uh, goes back to the uh, work of Keller. Uh, I, I believe uh, this is the first uh, paper who introduced the idea of A-infinity causal duality or DG causal duality. So there's a small remark that I, I have here, which is that, so this is our approach. I will explain our approach. This is from our paper. But since we wrote our paper, there's now uh, several groups of people who are working on these conjectures. Uh, here are the people that I'm aware of, and they, they all use uh, somewhat different ideas. Uh, so, that, uh, um, so, so hopefully these conjectures uh, will be proven uh, soon. Um, so uh, to, to, to explain uh, uh, this, this approach, uh, I, I will first uh, uh, prove it for, uh, I'll first prove this uh, conjectures for simple singularities. Okay, so, so simple singularities are uh, the following, is that these are the favorite uh, polynomials of everyone. So this uh, ADE singularities, they are known as Klein, Klein singularity, and uh, the simple ones are Stabilizations of that, so you just add some more squares. Uh, so these are these are known as the simple singularities. Uh, and in fact, uh, one of them appeared in uh, Toby at the end of Toby's talk. So this, uh, I believe, he was doing n equals to two case here. So and uh, and in dimension three. So the, this is a uh, this this category that uh, Toby described at the end. Uh, uh, will will appear here as well. Okay, so so what are we trying to prove? We are we are trying to prove that the we are trying to uh, prove that the Foucault category of the Milner fibers of them, these guys, are equivalent to some matrix factorization categories. And uh, what are the matrix factorization categories? They are the they are obtained by taking these guys and uh, transposing the matrix and uh, adding this extra uh, product term. Okay. Um, so, so one thing that's uh, that's nice about these uh, simple similarities is you can see that uh, you can see that uh, as soon as you add uh, one more term, well, uh, uh, you can see that all of them have, have z square in the end. So they are actually themselves stabilizations of lower dimensional ones. But uh, so so, as I said, I I, I want to uh, work with dimension two and higher because uh, the dimension one is settled and it's a bit different in that case. So so you can see that all of these guys are stabilizations, and that allows you to to say just that 
the, this polynomial plus this product term is actually right equivalent to this, this polynomial itself. So you can just uh, apply some change of variables. Uh, it's, it's an infinite one, but uh, matrix factorization categories are uh, just uh, sensitive to formal uh, neighborhood of singularities by a theorem of Ordo. So in this case, our, our task actually gets simplified. We don't have this extra product term. But these categories are equivalent. The, the right-hand side here is, is a kind of funny thing because W has uh, x1 to xn plus 1. So it doesn't have x0 in it. But this guy has uh, an extra, extra uh, c, which is the x0. Uh, side. So this, this W does not depend on X0. Okay, so it's a matrix factorization where there's one extra variable on the domain. Okay. Um, and that very fact allows uh, one to show actually that this uh, matrix factorization category is an n color BR completion of the corresponding Dink, uh, the path algebra of the corresponding Dink and So there's uh, if you if you remember, there is you know I could just uh, throw away this factor, and that was the category that I was uh, considering uh, as part of this uh, the first equivalence of this Futaki Ueda one, and that one uh, is just uh, the path algebra of the Dinkin cube. Remember, in the very beginning we started with the A two cube, right? So now if I add this extra variable. I shouldn't get anything substantially new, right? So it's uh, it's just I, I put an extra uh, on the domain. I put an extra factor. So in the, in, in terms of algebra, what uh, what happens is uh, you you just get an n color BR completion of this path algebra. So this is what's called Ginzburg algebra, and uh, so uh, so this right hand side is 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 I just explained, and uh, maybe I should explain left hand side now. Okay, so um, so there's 50 people and nobody is asking any questions. This is kind of weird to, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, all right, so let's continue. Um, so how do, we, how do we complete the left-hand side? Okay, so let's see. So first, uh, again, I'm, I'm discussing currently the, the case of simple singularities. So they're associated to some thinking quiver, right? And then the, the first part, the first line is, is this result of Futaki Ueda. So this is about the Fukai Zaido category, this, this, this side, and this is this matrix factorization category. Uh, of the of the dual polynomial, right? And and both sides uh, they are explicit computations, and that and what you get is the derived category of the corresponding path algebra of this link and quiver. Okay, so this involves uh, so some machinery to compute, uh, but but I would say this is an easier category to deal with, right? So as you would, you would guess from algebra as well, right? So the, the path algebra of a link and quiver is somehow uh, some of the easier object. Um, so, and the, the machinery that goes into here is some kind of uh, dimensional reduction. So that uh, that's uh, uh, so that's what Futaki Ueda computed explicitly and, and showed this equals. So, in, as I said, they show this somewhat more generally. They can take any uh, risk on farm, or uh, and they can add. Uh, they can make Tom Sebastian sums of those uh, together with the n polynomials. So it's it's pretty satisfactory here, even though it's not the full conjecture. This this line is uh, already quite a lot for for, for that. Um, but but the, the, the new conjecture, which is this Fukai uh, of the Miller fiber, is uh, is checked in very few cases. So so how do we do that? The idea is you take the sequence and you take the generators. Remember, on the left hand side, these will be some timbles, right? And 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 then you intersect that those timbles with the fiber. So you, you have a natural uh, functor from 
uh, from this category to this category. So you get some vanishing cycles. Um, and on the left hand side, we also has, have, have uh, an you know, obvious inclusion, sorry, obvious uh, um, map, because we, we, what we did essentially here is just adding an extra variable. So if, if you like, you can think of this in terms of singularity categories. So there's, there's an algebra, you know, the algebra, we just add an, another variable. But W doesn't change. So, and if you do this, uh, quite easily, you can show that the cohomological algebra is just this trivial extension algebra for, so we had some generators on each side. Their endomorphism algebra was the path algebra of the cleaver. We push them forward, and uh, the, the resulting endomorphism algebra of the generators are this trivial extension algebra. Okay. But in general, we are not done because that's a cohomological computation. So you have to figure out the infinity deformations. So but it turns out in the simple singularity case, there's intrinsic formality. So this is the consequence of a Hochschild cohomology computation. So we, we can compute this Hochschild cohomology explicitly. I will explain how we compute Hochschild cohomology of B, right? So this BQM. And, uh, and then you look at the, the place where higher products would live and there is no, there is no room for them. They are all, those, those cohomology groups are all zero. So therefore, this actually concludes the proof of uh, this equivalence because uh, we automatically induce it from the equivalence of Utaki and Ueda in this case. And uh, uh, well, for the wrapped category, uh, as I said, there is a causal duality. And uh, so this is again, you apply causal duality to both sides and then in the end you get this perfect uh, uh, complexes on the Ginzburg algebra that, uh, uh, and and we have uh, both A side and B side completely here. So these are all proven theorems. Okay, so uh, one thing that I, I didn't explain is how I compute this Hochschild cohomology. So this, uh, uh, you know, when I was young, I didn't know of many things, I mean, I, don't, I still don't know many things, but I, I knew even less than, and, and then I would compute this Hochschild cohomology by, you know, explicitly uh, writing some bimodular resolution of this algebra, right? And and that's really painful, yeah? especially if you if you are a geometer, it's really painful. So so I did this for uh, 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 puncture torus once. Um, it's in our paper with Tinker Roots. There's a six periodic resolution and uh, there's a lot of signs you multiply from the left, right, you have to keep track of all of that. And yeah, I mean, I just don't want to do it again. You know? So I, 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 I want to, uh, I'd rather find some more geometric way of computing this. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, fortunately we have a, a way to do that. So this is, uh, this is this uh, uh, beautiful formula on the matrix factorization side. So, um, so this is taking advantage of the fact that we are working with hypersurfaces, right? And what we have here is, so, so this algebra B, right? Let me get back to this algebra B. This algebra B on the right-hand side, uh, is, sorry, on here. So on, on, on the right-hand side, it, the, the derived category of this algebra is this, this category. So there is no discussion about that because I, I didn't do anything here. I added just an extra variable x0. And if you just compute, uh, uh, you know, the endomorphism algebra, what you get is uh, this, this BQM. So, so the key point here is, Instead of computing Hochschild cohomology of this BQN as just an algebra, it computes Hochschild cohomology of its derived category. And that you can compute using this, this matrix factorization category. Right? And what, what did we gain? I mean, we turned this uh, horribly uh, 
non-commutative algebra into this uh, commutative uh, world, right? And when you have a commutative variety, or, or like, it's not quite a variety, it's uh, some major factorization category, but you know, essentially, it's essentially the hypersurface defined by this W. Then you have uh, HKR type results. So, so, so you can um, compute this one, uh, some kind of causal resolution. And this is what this result is. So this is uh, maybe when uh, Toby was younger, he was doing this kind of stuff. So, uh, uh, so there's a formula for this Hochschild cohomology. Um, and uh, maybe a generalization is due to Ballard for Katsakov. I, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, uh, what names to put there. But nonetheless, there is a, there is a nice formula here. So this formula is much nicer than it looks. So, so that's the first thing to, to understand. So if you, so I, I'm not sure I should go into um, all the details of this, but these are basically uh, some causal uh, uh, complexes. And then these are some um, you know, characters that keep track of the grading. And this is the thing in variance with respect, with respect to your group. So, so I try to explain that here, but um, I, I'm not sure there is much insight to give here. It's a, it's, it's a nice formula that after you work out your first example, you're very happy to compute uh, any, any example with this formula. You don't have to take a arbitrary long bimodular resolutions and then keep track of all signs and all, all, way, all kernels and co-kernels. So, so here's how it looks like. So, so this um, this is an example. Uh, so this is this uh, A2 A2 uh, quiver. Uh, in this case, uh, we have this gamma is, is this group, and uh, and basically you you find some monomials that uh, that are that satisfy the, the things in the formula. So so you just have to find go through uh, various monomials and check that they are in the they are kind of in range with respect to this group. So, so, so this is really, um, I don't want to go through each slide, but what I'm trying to show you here is this is really something that's easy to compute. So starting from the polynomial, you can just write down this. So it's a very nice way of uh, telling the ranks of this Hochschild cohomology, right? So like, for example, I could just take, a, you know, an E8 quiver here, right? And, uh, take the zigzag algebra associated to E8 quiver. So if you if you try to look in the algebra literature, there are there are many papers that try to compute these things. with very very long papers. Uh, so and uh, but here the, the formula using a bit more machinery, right? That tells you these uh, these ranks very easily. So in the case of ADE, actually we wrote down this because there was an application to symplectic homology as well. Okay, so that's the that's the end of the simple case, and I want to come to now uh, the non-simple case. Right, so simple case was this AD singularities, and the key key simplification was there is no A infinity deformations. Right, so we essentially obtained it from Futaki Oedo's result about path algebras, uh, the 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 result of mere symmetry for linear fibers. What happens is you just consider this uh, trivial extension algebra or this uh, Calabiar completion if you care about the wrapped category. Okay. So, but the, the point is this only works for simple singularities, or, or, or more precisely, there's some conjecture that we have about this. Your singularity should be uh, somehow uh, a suspension of a lower dimension, it's, it's, it should be a stabilization for this uh, kind of. Uh, uh, formality to hold, right? So if you don't like A infinity algebras, you would stop here because uh, because now we really have to uh, worry about uh, these higher products. So now I'm going to explain the the case. This is is a not so simple case. Okay, so it's not a simple singularity anymore. It's this this particular one. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, 
there are many reasons I chose this one, but uh, maybe let's go through it. So, so if n equals to four, uh, oh no, so this n and this n are not the same. So this n should be three, sorry. Uh, let me just correct that. Okay. Yeah, so whenever you write a paper about hypersurfaces, there is always uh, in n plus one or n or n minus one problem. So anyway, so this is a uh, this is the n equals to three case. So it's a quartic uh, polynomial, and the reason that uh, you know I want to consider that first was because um, you know this is a famous uh, uh, you know if you add one more variable, it's, it's the famous k three surface quartic k three surface. Right? So this is a, these, these powers are chosen such that this is, a, a, if you compactify this minimal fiber and the corresponding projective space, you get a color BR hypersurface. But, you know, there are many of those. So this is a particularly nice one. So I want to explain what's going on here. So again, um, the first thing is, uh, this directed category, right? So this is uh, Fukai's idle category and this matrix factorization category. All right, so. Um, okay, so can I just think of this as a tensor product of the. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. So that, so that says it is pretty simple then, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. So this okay. is, no, no, but we are not, we are, we are not there yet. So we, we are okay. not so simple refers to B, not A. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> right. So A is pretty simple, and it's uh, in fact uh, it, it's just uh, so whenever you have a Tom Sebastiani sum, uh, your uh, A type quivers you just tensor them. So that's basically this uh, part of Futaki Ueda's result, and that's true in either side. So in either matrix optimizations or Fukai's idle categories, there is some kind of Tom Sebastiani sum formula. So A is pretty simple. And A, I, I take as a starting point. We have generators on each side, and an amorphism algebra is this one. But now let's come to B, right? What is B? So B, first of all, uh, we now Geometrically, as I said, it's it's not the Fukai Sado category, but it's Fukai, Fukai category of fibers. So by the way, this A, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe some people are familiar with this terminology. So it's A and B. So um, A is the category of vanishing cycles and B is the category of nearby cycles. Uh, maybe that could help some, some people. So, so this B uh, now, we intersect the vanishing cycle with the fiber, we get a vanish, uh, sorry, we intersect the temple with the fiber, we get a vanishing cycle. So those are a bunch of spheres, right? And uh, we take, uh, the, the, the easy thing to say is that the cohomology of this is the trivial extension algebra. But what's not easy is, is the infinity structure. So this infinity structure does not come uh, and you can't immediately determine it from this equivalence. Okay. So there we introduce this, uh, this idea. So this is a um, fun thing to do. So you have this B, this is an algebra. Uh, and I, I am looking for, uh, so on the Fukaya side, there is some infinity structure on this algebra. And I want to understand this AMP structure in a way that uh, I can match with something else, right? So on the, on the like I, I can compute on B or A side and I want to match them. But so, so, so what we do is we consider not this particular one, we consider all of them. So all AMP structures, we ask them to be minimal because we can arrange that easily by transfer uh, so all infinite structures whose cohomology uh, is, is given with a chosen isomorphism to this uh, algebra. Right? So this is a moduli space that we construct up to uh, gauge equivalence, so equivalence of uh, um, 
in infinity algebras that respect this is this uh, isomorphism so so initially you might think this is kind of a crazy thing to to consider right because who knows all these infinity algebras are so that you know there's infinite many opera operations so for each uh, input you have to give output so there's some kind of infinite many um, uh, so in order to write down what this is, you have to give infinite domain data. But the nice thing is you also divide by infinite domain symmetry group, the infinite dimensional symmetry group, right? So if you have an infinite dimensional space and you divide by infinite dimensional symmetry group, sometimes it could be finite dimensional, right? So, and uh, that's uh, what these conditions say here. Um, uh, so, so first of all, you write, a, you know, um, you want to make this into a representable uh, functor, and uh, that condition is uh, is, is this H H one uh, vanishing. And that you see an affine scheme already, and uh, uh, but maybe it's a it's kind of inverse limit of A M structure, so it could be uh, in. in infinite type defined, defined scheme. But if you also have a bound on the HH2, so if this is finite rank, um, so this uh, lower script uh, refers to the second grading, right? So B is a graded algebra, so there is a cohomological grading and then there is a second grading coming from the grading, graded, the grade, grading on the algebra B. So if this is finite dimensional, then this is an affine scheme of finite type um, and it's uh, so, so, but a priori it's okay, so it's an affine scheme, but what is this affine scheme, right? So, so I have to stop at 515, is that right? Or is, is that, is that the, oh, yes. so it's 615, sorry, yeah, so yes. it's six somewhere else, five somewhere else. So you have right. uh, eight, uh, eight, nine minutes left, I think. Right, okay, thank you. So this this affine scheme, which uh, so 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 first of all, there is these conditions for it to exist and be nice, but these conditions, we have a tool to compute, right? We I, I explained we can use this matrix factorization category to compute this thing and check it in our case. So that's good. Um, but second is, uh, I mean, okay, so we pr produce this affine scheme, but. What is it, right? So it is uh, maybe it's some random affine variety. <laughs> so, um, so, but there is one thing that, that that's nice that happens uh, in this case is the following. So we start with our polynomial, and we consider some of the much more classical object is a, a semi-universal unfolding of this polynomial. So we add essentially the monomials uh, with some coefficients. Uh, that are that generate the Jacobian ring of this thing, right? So somehow uh, this semi-universal unfolding. But I don't uh, add everything because I'm working with this uh, gamma, right? I only add the ones that uh, uh, that are homogeneous with respect to this gamma action. So that's uh, actually a smaller space in general. So in this case. Uh, this semi universal unfolding, uh, which is homogeneous with respect to this gamma, it turns out to have just two uh, uh, two terms, u1 and un plus 1. And uh, the, the subscripts uh, 1 and n plus 1 here are uh, the, they, they are weights of the uh, C star action. Uh, so since this is a quasi homogeneous uh, polynomial, its unfolding also has a quasi, uh, it, it can be done in. Uh, um, in a C star equivalent way, so that's some result of Pinkham, and uh, and so there's a weight of the C one and U n plus one as well. So and and I should also remind you here that this a infinity moduli space also has a C star action, right? So I can always uh, multiply m n by t to the n minus two, and that satisfies the uh, a infinity relations and the the, the fixed point of that C star action is the or is the formal A infinity structure. So that's that's an important structure to keep in mind. 
Okay, and and finally here is the theorem. So we start with any of any invertible polynomial, um, and this invertible polynomial. Uh, well, we have if a little bit of assumption, but not too much. So I mean, you should uh, if you're curious about what these are, you you, you have to look at the paper, but not uh, it's pretty general. Uh, so 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 this uh, starting from invertible polynomial. What we can show is the following. So this, this unfolding space, so that I called U, right? They allow you to change to these different polynomials, W, right? And each of these has, has the image of our generator, G from uh, the matrix of transition where I didn't have this N plus two, but N plus one, right? So the original functor. And uh, the theorem here is that these guys actually uh, uh, exhaust all A-infinity structures. So we always get, uh, cohomologically, they, they, they're always this trivial extension algebra, but they, as you change the polynomial, you get different A-infinity structures. And uh, the kind of remarkable thing here is that this, uh, So a priori, this, this moduli space was some moduli of infinity structures, but now they are just parameterized by these uh, essentially hypersurfaces defined by these uh, polynomials corresponding to the unfolding of the original singularity. Um, so, so using that uh, in certain cases, we can, uh, including this case that I'm discussing, so remember, in this case, I, I'm discussing that the U was very small, right? It's just, uh, you know, C2 with this, this C star action, it's very small. Uh, um, so, so when it's small, I have to just, uh, you know, one of these are the, the mirrors to, uh, the mirror to the uh, compact Fukaya category. So I have to find this compact Fukaya category among the possible U's. So, so when, when this, uh, uh, so I can do this, to, to do this, I need, I need some kind of uh, derived invariance to, to match. And uh, uh, so here, maybe this is the least, uh, so, so up to now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with this story. Uh, so here is, is uh, a place where uh, we, we a priori don't have a canonical way of determining which you which U is uh, our Fukai category. But what we can do is we can uh, compute the Hoxie homology of the Fukai category in these cases. And uh, in this moduli space, uh, so, so in this moduli space, we can compute Hoxie homology of everything. And the one that, uh, there's only one of them that matches the Hoxie homology of the Fukai category. So since that's, there's only one of them up to this C star action, so, so we are done. We we found our infinity structure. So and and that one turns out to be this one comma zero. So the one that corresponds to our conjecture, where this is one and this is zero. So that's the that's the infinity structure, whose which matches our Fukaya category. Okay. So so this is uh, what I want to explain. Uh, I guess that's it. So I will finish by this quote by Shihoko Ishii. I'm not mocking myself. Okay, so let's thank uh, Yankee for this very nice lecture. So are there any questions or comments? I see someone is typing. Okay, so uh, I maybe I have a small question. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, that there was some uh, equivalence between uh, the perfect category of the n Calabria completion and some matrix factorizations earlier for the Dinkin case. Yep. And did I understand correctly that this 
I gave, gave you a very easy way of calculating the Hochschild cohomology of the perfect yeah. right category. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in fact, uh, this is written completely explicitly in our last paper. So for any and and for any Dinkin cleaver, we we computed this because um, on the left hand side it corresponds to symplectic cohomology of this minimal fiber, and that was not uh, known for certain cases. So okay. so this is kind of transferring to nature's factorizations and computing it uh, um, allowed us to determine this symplectic common. So it was an application to symplectic side. But uh, yeah, it's, it is explicit formulas. Uh, so we computed explicitly. Right. I okay. don't know if that was uh, known purely algebraically, but uh, if someone knows, they can comment, I guess. Yeah, I don't know either. But... Yes, are there any other questions? So, well, can you maybe give some, like, for what kind of class of algebra do you understand this model of a infinity structures? Is there some, what are the kind of known examples where you have some kind of nice and concrete answer? Yeah, so I have some known examples uh, for uh, many polynomials. So, if you look at our paper, you will see lots of lots of Hoxha homology computations for this purpose. <laughs> So this is, I just highlight one of them. Um, so, and uh, the, the interesting thing is, uh, so the, these moduli spaces are related to this. Uh, uh, so for example, in dimension one, uh, this was this punctured torus case, right? That, that moduli space turns out to be the N11. So moduli of AT curves. In dimension two, uh, if we consider the Calabria case, uh, that uh, gives us these uh, moduli spaces of uh, lattice polarized K3 surfaces. So we have a uh, like very nice uh, connection to Lowenhaus' Lohen work in that way. But we don't uh, necessarily have to stop in dimension two, we can go to higher dimensions, and then there's uh, many, many uh, moduli of Calabria varieties with some extra polarization. That uh, uh, so this, th this theorem applies, and uh, so th this gives uh, many many new uh, moduli spaces, um, and and it's also uh, interesting because you can change the generators as well. So you don't have to. There's some conditions on this algebra B. They are always pushed forward from this directed category, right? But that's essentially it. And then, uh, so it, as you change the algebra, you, the moduli space does not, does not change. So you can consider the same algebra. These are finite dimensional algebras, right? And moduli of any features such as on them. And then they, the, the moduli spaces are the same because they, they get identified with this unfolding space. OK. Um, yeah, I mean. I don't know if I can give you a, yeah, I don't think I can give, a, if you tell me an algebra, what's the most space of the infinite structures on the algebra, but uh, these ones that come from invertible polynomials are related to moduli of Calabria varieties which are with some extra polarization. Okay. So are there any other questions? That doesn't seem to be the case, so let's thank the speaker again. Thank yes, uh, so I forgot to ask you before, Jan.